Hey guys, so as many of us are aware, the most recurring theme in Harry Potter, especially the last four books, is death. A lot of people die, main characters die. JK Rowling has even said herself that the Harry Potter story is not a happy story, it's a rather sad tale of events. She goes on to say that she reflected how she was feeling personally onto her characters. In fact, she was so down one day, she considered killing Ron Weasley, she even had his death written out. Now, there's many characters who did meet their demise unfortunately, Sirius Black, Cedric Diggory, and poor Dobby, which did take an emotional toll on all of us. But there's two people who I believe, frankly, should not have died, not both of them anyway. Remus Lupin and Nymphadora Tonks really were fantastically written. I've stated several times over the years that Remus is one of my all-time favourite characters, and to this day, I still strongly disagree with JK's reason for killing him and Tonks off. I will always argue their case, and as a matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to dispute why they should have been left alive, and how they could have had a more profound impact after the events of the books had ended. So guys, if you want to hear my argument for why Luke and Tonks should not have died, then stick around, grab yourself a butterbeer, and enjoy the video. Okay everyone, let's get started. So, I'm just going to say what you're all expecting me to say. Lupin and Tonks shouldn't have died. They just shouldn't have. They didn't need to, and if you ask me, it made the situation a lot worse, as so many important people had already given their life, so at the very least, we did deserve a reason as to why JK felt like Lupin and Tonks needed to join the growing list of war casualties, and okay, to her credit, she did give us a reason. I don't like it very much, but it's still her reason. So, JK felt that in order for the story to come full circle, it needed to end how it began, leaving a child parentless from circumstances beyond control. The story begins with Harry growing up without parents, and will end with poor baby Teddy Lupin in the same boat, growing up without his mum and dad. Now, this was to unload a little more pain into Harry's heart, and a little more guilt onto his already heavily weighed down conscience. For Harry Potter being her baby, JK Rowling really does put him through the toughest of tests, by taking yet again another father figure from him, but basically the point she was getting at is, Harry will finally see his reflection in another being. He'll know what that boy will go through, and will try to be there for him as best he can. Now that's not a bad angle from a writing perspective, but my argument is, isn't it just a forced parallel? Harry is already dealing with so much loss already. Ron and Ginny, two of the closest people to him, have lost their brother Fred. Dumbledore is dead. Sirius is dead. Snape is dead. And the guilt Harry must have felt after seeing that Snape was only ever looking out for him and how he truly loved his mother, well that must have been overwhelming. Sirius, his godfather, whom he plans to live with and finally build a home, taken from him. Was there truly any need to add Lupin and Tonks to that frame? Well, according to JK, there was, because as I said at the beginning of the video, Harry Potter is a sad story. It doesn't have a happy ending. It has a successful ending. They beat the bad guy, but at great cost and great loss. You'll also remember me stating in the introduction of the video that JK Rowling's mood and emotional state has always been beamed onto her characters. She has changed her mind several times about the fate of certain characters. Let's look at the Ron decision for a moment. She had once been in quite a sorrowful state one day, and just felt like she wanted to kill off Ron Weasley. She said she can't describe why she felt that way, but she just knew she wanted to kill him off. She even wrote out his death for her publisher. It was going to be included as a shock death within the book. However, she finally came to her senses and just felt like, okay, I'm going to leave him alive. Like the flip of a switch. Rowling had actually intended for Lupin and Tonks to survive. That was the original plan. Arthur Weasley was actually to die from the attack by Nagini in the Order of the Phoenix, but Rowling at the last minute decided that with Fred dying in the final book, 
maybe two losses would be a little harsh on the Weasleys and saved Arthur. In exchange for Arthur, however, JK decided that Remus Lupin and Nymphadora Tonks would die in his place in the Battle of Hogwarts. Some of you know this and some of you may not, but there you have it, the couple were originally intended to survive. I think it's quite harsh on Lupin himself. It's no shock that he was a more developed character than Tonks, so he had a lot more to benefit from if he survived and I think the reader also had a lot more satisfaction to gain. Lupin had spent the better part of his life alone, feeling unworthy of love, undeserving of life. He finally, after two decades, meets the woman of his dreams, a woman who loves him. He marries her and they bear a child together. It was something to look to after the war, something to build upon. Despite everything he'd been through, Remus would actually get a happy ending. Not to mention, those half-breed anti-werewolf laws being lifted also meant he'd finally be able to get a job without prejudice. Tonks could have also excelled as an Auror, helping revamp the Auror's office and possibly even taking charge of the Dementor removal operation that would be happening at Azkaban. There was so much potential for something good to come from this and they get killed. Both of them. Not even one survives. And what about Andromeda, Nymphadora's mother? How badly would that have affected her? I feel so many people overlook her for having such a small role, but her two sisters disowned her. Then her husband is killed. Now her daughter and son-in-law have just been killed. And she's left to raise Teddy all by herself while dealing with what I can imagine to be an overwhelming amount of grief. Lupin and Tonks were the little bit of happiness in a time of so much darkness. People were going missing, officials were being killed, everyone was afraid, terrified. Just like the previous war. Nobody could trust each other, yet despite all that, Lupin and Tonks blossomed. They allowed time for love. They married and conceived a child and that's what I love so much about their relationship. The same with Bill Weasley and Fleur Delacour. They gave the reader a bright moment or two in a book filled with so much darkness. It's why I genuinely loved both couples. I think it's sad that while Lupin and Tonks were such a small ray of light for us, when the darkness finally lifted, their light went out. They definitely did not need to die. As I said, so many people before them already had and they had so much potential to make the best of their future after being dealt such an awful hand. Despite my love for the books, the movie did something that I think the books couldn't or could never do and that's give us that truly heartbreaking scene of the couple lying side by side right after they had been killed. They died separately but laid together. Anyway everyone with that being said, that's my argument for why Lupin and Tonks should have lived. My question for you today is, do you agree with me? Should they have survived? I think they do. Let me know your comments in the comment section below. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and as always, be happy. Hi again everyone, Dean here. Firstly, I just want to take a moment to thank you all for four years on YouTube. Secondly, and most importantly, I want to wish you all a very merry, merry Christmas to you, your families and all of your friends. I hope you all cherish each other greatly at this time of year. Fill your bellies with food and wine, have fun and go into the year 2020 with your heads held high for what I hope will be a fantastic year for us all. Thank you again, Merry Christmas and please have a Happy New Year. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at instadeanj and on Twitter at potterfolklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.